Well, this is what we call progress on crate training. Yeah. Stretched out. Digging it. Literally. Mm-hmm. Huh, Bo? Are you happy there? Are you happy there? Silly pup. Mm-hmm. You turn a year old, you get an e-collar, and suddenly you become this totally different happy dog who listens to everything. Almost. Yeah. You goober. You goober. What are you doing? Mm-mm-mm. What are you doing? Did you get it? Where is it? <gasps> there it is! Did you get that June bug? Get that June bug! There it is! Get it! Get it! <laughs> get that June bug! Get it! <laughs> You're silly. Where is it? Is it still alive? No? Maybe? Does it... <laughs> is it prickly on your tongue? Is that why you're acting that way? <laughs> behind you. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> You're so weird. It's still moving. <laughs> you better hope it doesn't crawl in your ear. Under your paw. Lift your foot up. It's under your foot. Well, it was. Where'd it go? Oh no. Where'd it go? It's got to be over there. Did you eat it? It's not over here. It's got to be over there.
I think he did too. He must have ate it. I don't see it. It's gone. You must have ate it. It's all gone. You're, you're keeping an eye on it, right? One paw on my feet and both eyes on that skeeter hawk. Yeah, there's a mosquito hawk in here, isn't there? And you got your eyes on it while you're keeping your paw on me. Such a good boy. Yeah. He's just flitting along up there, isn't he? Oh, you can't get him. You want him though, don't you? You like to eat him. <laughs> Jelly. Hello. So, it has been a hot minute since I have done any kind of updates on really what's going on. And that's because things have really been crazy. Um, yeah. Um, as y'all saw, Bo's doing fantastic. <laughs> um, he's a year old now. Um, we have reached a milestone. Well, we've reached a couple of milestones on the channel. Um, a hundred videos uploaded. Um, two years on YouTube. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, so those are the milestones. That and Bo turned a year old on February tw 26th. So, yeah. Um, a lot of cool stuff has happened. And I'm grateful for that. Um, because I have to focus on that. Um, I've been struggling with a lot of things. Um, besides, of course, the usual Kyari, um, and the cranial cervical instability. Um, the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, the degenerative disc disorder disease. Thank you, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, early last month, my digestive system decided it wanted to quit working so well. And my primary care doctor has been doing everything in his power to figure out why. Um got a an abdominal x-ray done and there is what's called thumbprinting on my um, colon um, and it doesn't coincide with what the radiologist report says. Um, 
there's also some enlargement of my um, intestinal tract that the x-ray shows. Um, and he is concerned, as am I. Um, I've compared them with that, that x-ray with past x-rays from when I had my abdominal um, surgery from when I had my back, uh, uh, my, excuse me, my anterior lumbar fusion. And um, there's a lot of changes that have happened. Um, he ran a full blood panel on me. Um, my cortisol levels are out of whack, which co coincides with the partial empty cell syndrome that is caused by um, intracranial pressure. pressure. Uh, my pituitary gland is being flattened by excess... Um, spinal fluid. Um, yay me. Anyway, um, I have enlarged ventricles in my brain, also known as hydrocephalic. Oh, I can't even say that. Hydrocephalus. Um, but I can't get shunted because my insurance won't pay for a neurosurgeon. Um, the full blood panel also showed that I have a lipid disorder. Um, he called it um, hypolipidemia, I believe is what he called it. Hypo, maybe he may have said hyper. I don't know. Um, basically, my I have a white blood cell that is elevated. Um, I can't even pronounce that particular white blood cell. I will write it on the screen right here. Um, and my cholesterol is also elevated. My LDL is elevated. And together, those with another portion of my blood levels is elevated, causing this um, lipid disorder. Now, this lipid disorder can be caused by something going on in the digestive system. Well, hello. Um, when I eat, after taking just a few bites, I'm full. But not really full. I'm still hungry, but I can't eat anymore. I get really bloated. Within 15 minutes, I am in excruciating pain, and not just in my stomach, like where your food is, but like all over. Um, and then I look like I'm about eight months pregnant from the bloating. Sometimes I have, okay, this is TMI, but here we go. Sometimes I have diarrhea, sometimes I am just plain old constipated. Um, it goes back and forth. And there's a lot of other symptoms, which we don't need to get into, but it's not pleasant, I'll tell you that. Um, a lot of nausea. And I have a lot of malabsorption issues happening. Um, my fingernails are extremely rigid, ridged, ridged, meaning I have deep ridges, vertical ridges in all of my fingernails. They're also breaking um, and peeling 
chipping. Um, my hair is falling out. My eyelashes are falling out. My skin is flaking in areas that doesn't normally flake. Um, to say I am a hot mess would be an understatement. <laughs> um, so I have been referred to gastro and the first available appointment that my gastro gastroenterologist has is the end of April. Now I have been put on the cancellation list for both his offices, meaning if they get cancellations I will be moved up in the spot. They are aware of all of my conditions and um, they are aware that I was just seen in the emergency room for this issue last week and was treated like dog shit. Um, the ER doctor took a urinalysis, said I was fine and to go home. And I was so angry, I was like, really, that's it? No testing, that's just a UA. And he's like, what do you expect me to do? And I just wanted to scream at him, your fucking job. But I didn't because he was already aggravated that I was there and I didn't want to be thrown out by security. So I just, you know, was like, well, I don't know, maybe some imaging would have been nice. And he promptly told me, well, we don't do that in the ER, which I know that is a lie. Um, he didn't really even examine my abdomen. He basically patted me on the head and sent me on my way. Um, and I, I was so disappointed. And this is the typical emergency room visit for a chronic pain patient. They pat you on the head and send you on the way. And it doesn't seem to matter what's wrong with you. You could be bleeding to death and they're going to ask you, what do you want me to do about it? Hi, Bo. <laughs> um, he is not the center of tension right now, so he wants to be. <laughs> um, it's very unfortunate that emergency room doctors don't take people seriously because usually there's a serious issue happening. And um, it is what it is. This is the crisis that America is facing today. It's not an opioid crisis. It's a lack of care crisis. Um, you can ask the millions of chronically ill and disabled people across America and they'll tell you the same thing. It's not an opioid crisis, it's a lack of care crisis. So, you know, this is what, what life is right now. I have been questioned by my best friend on whether or not my illnesses have actually been diagnosed by an actual physician. Um, like this is something that I, uh, <laughs> that I just want to live with, you know. No, I just like being this way. Come on now. I just Google shit that I've never heard of? What? Really? Do you know how hurtful that is to somebody? I mean... Some of this shit I've never even heard of. You know, doctors tell me stuff and I'm like, what, what the hell is that? I have to go home and Google it to find out what it is because I've never heard of it before. And then to ask me, have you ever, have you really been diagnosed by this by an actual physician? 
Come on now. Get, get a life. Um, you know, it's just... You know, these are things you don't say to people, healthy people, much less people who have chronic illnesses. You know. And I think about all the things that... I, I'm not even going to go there, but um, there's just some things that shouldn't be said, and I guess I, I'm going to not say them. Um, so this is life right now. Um, I live in two braces, and for my neck, this is my at-home brace. Um, I haven't been sleeping in this one because it's really not comfortable. It aggravates the back of my head right under my occipital bone and flares my occipital neuralgia. Um, and that is so unpleasant, I'll tell you. Um, and the other one, here, let me get it. I have um, this baby right here. Um, looks like something you'd see a warrior or something wear. This is the Minerva. This is the mini Minerva. I wear this when I ride in the car. Yes, ride. I'm not allowed to drive. My mother has taken my keys away. No bite. No bite. Um. And I wear that because it covers more of the back of my head. Um, and it stabilizes my whole neck better in the car. So I don't feel like I'm bobbling just my head around so much. The only thing that I don't like about that is that it dislocates the left side of my jaw. Um... And I've got it as uh, as adjusted as I possibly can. So I've got some compression garments that I will be discussing at a later date. Um, that I have picked up and tried out. Um, some of them I'm kind of happy with. Others not so much. Um, a wedge pillow that I've also picked up that. I'm quite pleased with that I will also discuss. Um, and this little boy right here has earned himself an e collar. I use the tone setting 99% of the time because it works. Um, because he's a lab. He is more puppyish um, than other breeds for a longer period of time. And because I need him to be um, able to have public access, I need to get his bark under control. Um, he has become very talkative. Um, by talkative, I mean he likes to talk to people. <laughs> everywhere with a very loud bark because <laughs> um, he likes to be he, he's an attention whore um, <laughs> and he has this lovely open mouth laugh um, let me see <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> um, and I can't have him bark at all in public. So he's learning the word quiet with a tone. Um, 
and it's slow. We haven't had the collar very long. Um, it does have three different settings. It has a tone, vibrate, and a shock on it, and I do not like the shock at all. I yeah. So um, it has three settings. It has vibrate, tone, and shock. I don't like this setting, the shock setting. I tried it on myself. I did not like it. Therefore, I will not use it. I don't like it. The vibrate, I use it only when he tries to run out in the pasture and not listen to me. Um, no bite. Um, because, because we have wild hogs that like to roam and tear up our pasture and he likes to, um, how should I say this, roll with wild, uh, um, ambition through their droppings um, and be covered in their poo. Yeah, it's disgusting and he reeks afterwards. So, um, yeah, it's just, and, and so I will use the vibration if he tries to not listen to me. Because that he listens to. And he will turn around and come to me. Um, so anyway, that's it for now. Um, be looking for a kind of a review on the compression garments. Um, and later updates on what we discover with my in digestive issue and the lipid condition disorder, whatever you want to call it. Um, all I know is uh, damn, I want to eat and if I can't eat, at least let me lose some damn weight. <laughs> um, anyway, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give it a big thumbs up and show me some love. Um, with the algorithms, with YouTube, they're kind of hiding videos right now from us. So show me some love and hit that like big thumbs up button. Thanks. Bye for now.